Uh, we're talking about Gilead Sciences, which is a personal favorite for all three of us. They reported earnings this morning. Uh, if you follow us on Twitter, which the handle, by the way, is MF Industry Focus, then you already know I spent my morning commute Metro Ride reading the call transcript. So this has been my entire day so far. We've been <laughs> giddily chatting about it ever since. And we're going to give the biotech a grade in a little bit for how they did in 2015. But first, let's hear some numbers. All right. Let me dive in and give everyone the numbers they've been waiting for. Uh, Q4 revenue was $8.5 billion. That was up 16% from a year ago. Q4 adjusted earnings were $3.32 a share. That was up from two forty three dollars a year ago. And for the full year, sales were a whopping $32.6 billion, up from $24.9 billion in 2014. And adjusted earnings per share were $12.61, which was up handsomely from the 809 they delivered in 2014. I'm just going to reiterate that $33 billion number, because I'd love to compare it to the guidance that they gave a year ago today. So February 3rd, 2015, revenue guidance was for $26 to $27 billion. Midway through the midway, maybe three different times during the year, let's just say that, they upped the guidance. It ended up being an estimate of 30 to 31, and then they beat that too. Yeah, and 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 I think that one of the one of the big things you have to then think about is okay. So they on this call said okay, our guidance for 2016 is around 31 is uh, 30 to 31 billion for revenue. Okay, folks, after last year, remembering last year's lesson, uh, this. I've got to think this is sandbagging. You know, you, you look at that and you think, okay, gosh, you know, revenue's going to decline a little bit from 2015. That's not great. Yeah, except that this time last year they were saying um, that they'd be six billion lower than they ended up getting. Yeah, I'm not personally disappointed at all with 2016 guidance. Yeah, um, I, I well, think it would be nice, obviously, if they had jumped out and said. Yep. You know what? We don't view any of these competing drugs as threats, and we think we're going to deliver $40 billion. But, you know, <laughs> Gilead Sciences, as you know, they tend to uh, rein in the expectations a little bit. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think over time it makes much more sense for management to be conservative than it is for them to be pie in the sky. Well, especially because... They, they, they are conservative, and then at the very least, they deliver on that conservative, and usually they beat it handsomely. And so you've got managements that talk a big game, and you've got managements that actually play a big game, and this is definitely the latter. So you can't just say, you know, we, we expect pretty flat revenue without giving any good reasons for it. Let's dig into some of these reasons. Why such low guidance? Well, there's a, there's a few different things that are going on here that, that are affecting guidance. I mean, you've got, you know, a, a, an increasingly competitive market here in the United States, okay? You've got, you know, obviously, Vicare pac has been on the market since last January of 2015. Competing you've got hepatitis a recent C drug. approval. What's that? Oh, competing hepatitis C drug is what Christine said. Correct. Uh, although, got to gotta, gotta insert in there, yeah, but Vicare pac's under 10% market share. So, you know, so far, <laughs> Gilead's... Gilead's Having a pretty good run of it, but sorry, I'll, I'll let you continue. Yeah, no, you're you're right. And again, you know, they came into 2015 with uh, the same kind of uncertainties, if you will, as they're coming into 2016. At the time, they had no idea whether or not uh, Vicarapac was going to take 10 percent of the market or 30 percent of the market. Right? They didn't know whether or not they would be able to negotiate uh, price reimbursement. In you know throughout the European Union, they weren't sure whether or not or when they would launch in Japan. They weren't sure whether or not government funding um, would drive patient starts for Medicaid and for you know at patients being treated at the VA. So you look at 15 and you say, okay, well you know they had very tepid guidance. You look at 16; it's the same kind of issues: competitive threats government payers, international launches. And, and, you know, so there are a lot of similarities, but at the same time, you know, they're real risks. I mean, I, I think it makes sense for them to be conservative. You know, we, we don't know how this is all going to shake out. 